This is Keith Berkelhammer and this is Reef Bun TV. A reef tank dominated with SPS is a lot like a young growing boy. It has a big appetite and can quickly eat you out of house and home. Similar to how boys can consume large quantities of ring dings and yodels, okay I'm showing my age here, SPS can suck up a lot of calcium and alkalinity. These corals have calcium skeletons and demand a lot of calcium and alkalinity supplementation to grow and thrive within an aquarium. The relationship between calcium and alkalinity is a complex one, and I highly recommend reading some articles on the topic penned by some of the experts such as Randy Holmes Farley. What I would like to address here are the different options available for calcium and alkalinity supplementation. When I started to keep reef tanks, I kept mostly soft corals and began to experiment with SPS after achieving success with the soft corals. I used a two-part calcium and alkalinity supplement from ESV and it did a great job. As I added more SPS, my calcium and alkalinity demands grew, requiring more of the two-part solution. Cost can be a downside when using two-part for tanks requiring a lot of calcium and alkalinity supplementation, but some SPS enthusiasts swear by it since it is a ready-made and simple-to-use solution. Just figure out the amounts you need and add daily manually or via some automated doser. Another way to supplement calcium and alkalinity is to use a calc reactor. Calcwasser is used in conjunction with RO water that is either gravity fed or forced through the unit via a separate dosing pump. The calcwasser and RO water need to be mixed and a unit such as this one sold by My Reef Creations uses a pump attached to the reactor to do the mixing. Calc reactors are great but they do struggle on their own to keep up when calcium and alkalinity demands are high. You get the most bang for your buck with a calcium reactor and this one sold by Marine Technical Concepts is great for systems that require a lot of calcium and alkalinity. Once dialed in, these units allow you to set it and forget it. The pH of the effluent coming out of the calcium reactor is low, so sometimes it is necessary to also use a calc reactor to boost pH and further augment calcium and alkalinity. I've had a lot of success using both reactors with my tanks. No matter which way you go, be diligent and test your calcium and alkalinity levels on a regular basis. Calcium in natural seawater falls in the 380 to 400 part per million range, while alkalinity is around 8 dKH. Alkalinity is more important, so keep a keen eye on it and avoid any large swings. My tanks do well when it is between 8 to 9 dKH. Testing for magnesium is important as well, since low levels can make it difficult to maintain proper calcium and alkalinity levels. Shoot for something in the 1300 part per million range. Overall, success will be achieved when you find that happy zone and replenish the calcium and alkalinity your corals consume. The appetite can be large, so don't forget to feed the beast. Just a quick reminder that you can view my live HD webcam on ReefBum.com. Use the ReefBum TV nav button to get there and to visit my HD video page. Many thanks for watching and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be alerted to new videos on my YouTube channel.